Hey guys, I trust you're all doing really well. So last week we had a look at percussive instruments. So those were instruments that are played by hitting or scratching um, or generally just percussive things being done to them. This week we're going to be carrying on with our series on instruments and we'll be looking at wind instruments specifically. Now what is a wind instrument? A wind instrument is an instrument that is played by you blowing into the instrument, therefore wind. So wind instrument is a musical instrument that contains some type of resonator. So if we think about a trumpet, the resonator would be the long tube. So how this works is when you blow into that instrument, the air that you're blowing in there is actually producing the sound. Now you can change the pitch, i.e. the notes, by pressing certain buttons on it or blowing harder or softer. The place where the person blows into the instrument is called the mouthpiece and that's usually set on the other end of the instrument. So the design of certain wind instruments differs from others. In the case of some wind instruments, sound is produced by blowing through a reed. Others require buzzing into a metal mouthpiece, while yet others require the player to blow into a hole at the edge. Wind instruments come in two categories. The first is brass instruments and the second is woodwind instruments. Now you would think that's because brass instruments are made of brass and woodwind instruments are made of wood, but it's actually because of the method by which players produce sound rather than the material of the instruments. For example, the saxophone is typically made of brass, but it is classified as a woodwind instrument because it produces sound with a vibrating reed. On the other hand, the didgeridoo, the wooden cornet, and the serpent are all made of wood, but they belong to the family of brass instruments because the vibrating is done by the player's lips. With brass instruments, the player's lips themselves vibrate, causing the air within the instrument to vibrate. With woodwind instruments, however, the player either causes a reed to vibrate, which agitates the column of air, like with a saxophone or clarinet and oboe, or they blow over something called a fipple um, across an open hole against an edge, like with a recorder, or they blow across the edge of an open hole, like with a flute. Now let's have a look at the history of wind instruments. Early man, in all probability, ended up using hollow reeds and fruit shells to blow into to create a sound and this would be considered the first type of wind instrument. Now we know from previous lessons that the voice came first as a form of music, then came percussive instruments like hands and rocks and so forth and it is strongly considered that the third form of music would be wind instruments. As we saw in earlier lessons, there was a primitive form of a flute made out of the bones of a bird and a bear's femur bone as well. Early wind instruments would usually only produce one note or maybe a different type of note when being blown harder. So in order to get many notes together, they would have to have a few musicians together blowing at the same time in order to create um, chords or uh, just a different type of sound instead of just one note. Now, the early South Americans developed pan pipes and Zulu shepherds worked on one note wind instruments as well. While in other ancient civilizations like Egypt, China and Sumeria, finger holes were implemented into the instruments enabling them to play more than one note on their flute. As ancient nations continued to develop and to grow, they started to use different items as wind instruments. The discovery of pipes proved to be a huge development in modern day wind instruments. Blowing into two pipes at the same time produced a melody and a harmony. The invention of bagpipes was derived from pipes after people added an airbag to them. As technology advanced and people's understanding of instruments advanced as well, we eventually got the bassoon, clarinet and the oboe. Woodwind instruments like the clarinet, oboe, flute and saxophone all have different backgrounds and appeared at different times in history. The clarinet first appeared in Islamic and Asian countries 700 years ago. The oboe was a French instrument that was first used in the court of Louis XIV. In the 18th century, it became a popular solo instrument that was mainly used by famous composers such as Bach and Telemann. 
The saxophone was invented by Adolf Sachs in 1841 after he had worked on perfecting the bass clarinet. The flute was developed more than 1,000 years ago in ancient Asia. Brass instruments including the trombone and trumpet emerged thousands of years apart. Drawings of trumpets in the Egyptian culture date back to 1500 BC. Other ancient trumpets have come from several countries including Rome, Israel, Greece, India, China and Japan. These first types of trumpets were made from bamboo, silver shell, ivory, wood and bone. The earliest of the typical trumpet that we know of today were simply long tubes with a bell at the end. They were only used to call an army into battle or to announce a royalty arrival. The trombone was created in the late 16th century and there were three sizes, the alto, tenor and bass. The French horn or just horn is a brass instrument made of tubing wrapped into a coil with a flared bell. The double horn is the horn that is most often played by players in the professional orchestras and bands and musicians who play a horn are known as a horn player or hornist. The trumpet is a brass instrument that is commonly used in a lot of classical and jazz ensembles. The trumpet has also been placed into different ranges for different keys. You get the piccolo trumpet which has the highest register and then you also get the bass trumpet which is pitched one octave below the standard B flat or C trumpet. This instrument has quite a history and the earliest trumpets date back to 1500 BC. Bronze and silver trumpets have been found in Tutankhamun's grave in Egypt. Metal trumpets have also been found in China dating back to the same period. Trumpets have also been found in the Bible, the shofar made from a ram horn and the hat sotsaroth made of metal are both mentioned in the Bible. They were played in Solomon's temple around 3000 years ago. Trumpets were also used in the battle of Jericho where the walls came down. The trombone also belongs to the family of brass instruments and sound is created by the lips vibrating. It works a little differently to the rest of the family of brass instruments. Instead of using valves to change the pitch, it has a movable slide which changes the length of the instrument which then in turn changes the pitch. The euphonium is a medium sized 3 or 4 valve brass instrument and it gets its name from ancient Greek which means well sounding or sweet voiced. <laughs> Thank you. 
The tuba has the lowest register in the brass family. In other words, it has very low notes, so think of a bass guitar. As with all brass instruments, the sound is produced by lip vibration into a large mouthpiece. It first appeared in the mid 19th century, making it one of the newer instruments in the modern orchestra and concert band. A person who plays a tuba is called a tubaist or tubist. The tuba is considered to be a bass instrument and in many orchestras they only use one tuba but there are times when the orchestra is a bit bigger that they require more than one. The recorder is part of the woodwind family and these instruments are made in many different sizes and made from different materials. Traditionally they are made of wood or ivory but now in the modern day they are made from molded plastic. A recorder uses holes to change the pitch of the instrument. It has a thumb hole for the upper hand and seven finger holes, three for the upper hand and four for the lower. The sound of the recorder can be described as clear and sweet and it has been associated with birds and shepherds. The next instrument in the woodwind family is the flute. The flute does not use a reed to produce sound and is known as a reedless wind instrument. Instead, air flows across an opening and this is what gives you the sound. A musician who plays a flute can be called a flute player or a flautist. Flutes are considered to be one of the earliest wind instruments and date back thousands of years. The oboe is known as a double reed woodwind instrument. Oboes are usually made of wood but can also be made of synthetic materials like plastic, resin and hybrid composites. The oboe is widely used as a classical instrument and can be found in many orchestras. Because of its distinct sound and sweet nature it can also be found in many film scores or in plays.
The clarinet has a single reed mouthpiece, a straight cylindrical tube, and has a flared bell. A person who plays a clarinet is known as a clarinetist. The clarinet is widely used in orchestral music or as a solo instrument. The saxophone is also part of the woodwind instrument family. Even though the instrument is made of brass, it is still considered a woodwind instrument because it uses a single reed mouthpiece. The saxophone has quite a variety of uses within music. It's used in concert bands, chamber music, solo repertoire, occasionally in orchestras, military bands, marching bands, and it is also very, very popular in jazz. The bassoon is a double reed instrument that plays in the bass and tenor clefs. Occasionally it also is played in the treble clef. The bassoon is used prominently in orchestral, concert band and chamber music literature. It is known for its distinct sound which has an interesting colour and a wide range and variety of character. This piece of music, it's called A Short Ride in a Fast Machine. Fran, what does it make you think of? It makes me think that I'm going on a short ride in a fast machine. Yes, that's exactly why it's called that. It was written by someone called John Adams. Fran, why are you making holes in a carrot? Because we're going to use these to discover how woodwind instruments like these work. What's a carrot got to do with woodwind instruments? You will see. <laughs> I'm not sure what this carrot business is all about, but this definitely isn't a carrot, obviously. It's a clarinet, which belongs to the family of woodwind instruments. Nice! And this is a recorder, and it also belongs to the woodwind family. Lovely, but a clarinet wins every single time. You know, simple woodwind instruments were first played as far back as 20,000 years ago. And these Chinese woodwind instruments are about a thousand years old. And, as you'll see, Fran, they are not carrots either.
the clarinet and the recorder make musical sounds in different ways. When Fran blows into her recorder, the air is forced through a narrow passage called the windway and hits something called the labium. Watch what's happening in slow motion. The stream of air is flicking back and forth. One moment the air is above the labium, the next it's below it. This movement, which is actually happening really quickly, makes the air inside the recorder vibrate. This is what makes sound waves that we can hear. And the Irish whistle, that works in a similar way. <coughs> Beautiful. And at the other end of the scale is the amazing Australian didgeridoo. A clarinet is called a reed instrument. That's because it has got something called a reed attached to the mouthpiece. And they're called reeds because they used to be made from plants called reeds. Today, a reed is a very thin piece of material that vibrates against the mouthpiece when you blow over it. This vibration makes the air inside the clarinet vibrate too. That creates sound waves and the notes that you hear. OK, so that's how a clarinet and a recorder make a single sound. The question is, how do we make them play lots of different notes? It all depends on how much air in the instrument is vibrating. And we can demonstrate how this works with just some everyday drinking straws. So, Greg, here's yours. Thanks. And what you need to do is pinch the end to make a mouthpiece. Then you cut the corners off to make it into a point. Now, if you do this at home, do be careful with the scissors. Have you done it? Yep. Now, all you've got to do is blow. <laughs> good, good. Now, cut a little bit off the end of the straw and try it again. <laughs> now, because we've cut a bit off, that means the straw is shorter and so there's less air inside it. And because there's less air vibrating, the note has gone higher. It has what we call a higher pitch. Now, cut a little bit more off. OK. Yep. And then play it. And it's got a higher pitch still. Now, watch this. <laughs> Love it. Right, right, so all I have to do to make my clarinet play a higher note is... <sighs> cut it in half. Uh, no. Be funny though. It, it might be, but it would also ruin your clarinet. Okay. Woodwind instruments have a series of holes along the tube. We can change the amount of air that's vibrating inside by covering the holes up. So if we cover all the holes in a recorder, that means there's a lot of air vibrating in the tube because it can't escape through the holes. And the result is a note with a low pitch. If I cover up just one hole, that means the air can escape, and so less air vibrates, and this makes a note with a higher pitch. Right, I've got it. Your clarinet has holes in it too, but it works a bit different because you use keys to cover them up. Exactly. Show off. Right, you might think that all woodwind instruments are made of wood, but they're not. Saxophones are made of metal and recorders can be plastic. In fact, you can make woodwind instruments out of all sorts of things. Even a carrot. Ah, oh, finally. I was wondering when the carrot would crop up. All you have to do to make a woodwind instrument is make something with a space inside that is full of air that can vibrate. So, to make my musical carrot, I've hollowed out its centre, like that, and I've just made a series of holes in a row. Right. These little holes line up with the big hole that's down the middle. Okay. And you might need a grown-up to help you with that bit. Next, you take half a pepper and stick it on one end and a mouthpiece and stick it on the other. This is getting even more bonkers. And there you have one complete musical carrot. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, really cool. It works though, doesn't it? Hey Fran, here's something interesting. Around 4,000 years ago, if you were a shepherd knocking about in ancient Greece, minding your flock, you could pass the time by playing your panpipes. Greg, I don't know what to do with you. But what we can do is we... We can make our own instrument out of a balloon and a cardboard tube. I've called it a balloon clarinet. Hmm. And to make your own balloon clarinet, you need a balloon, obviously, 
and you chop off the big end of the balloon and secure the small end to a little bit of plastic piping. Get a grown up to help you if you need. And then with this open part here, you attach this onto a cardboard tube. And you've got to secure it in place with an elastic band, just like this. And then you can take that one, Greg. Okay. I'll take this one. And to play it, you simply blow. <laughs> brilliant, isn't it? And what's happening here is the balloon is acting like the reed that you saw on Greg's clarinet. And here you can actually see the vibrations as you play it. Look. Uh, they sound a bit like car horns, don't they? They do, which means they'll be great instruments to join in with a short ride and a fast machine. Oh, I see what you've done there. Come yeah, on, let's, let's go. Do it. Ha 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 